Well, we're about to go paint the Mercury 9. Just had three spots to mask. That was the engines, and I used some pink silly putty to do it with. Okay? I started scratch building the interior on the command center. Here's the back wall. There's a window cut out because I'm using this film I showed you guys for with it. I tried shining the light through the white plastic. It's just too dim. I was going, then thought about using clear plastic, and I said to myself, heck, just cut a window out, glue this down on the window, and you'll be able to see everything just fine. All right? So, I'm, oh, can't do that. Just don't use this clip at all. Um, yes, BB. I'm getting up here because this is too fun. So we got BB Cat now on top of Thundercat. Thunder. <laughs> Thunder. There's Thundercat and BB Cat. I'm not scared of heights. Okay, BB. Got a question for you. What? What is that on your cheek right here? Chocolate face. You got a chocolate face? Have we been stuffing you with Nutella? That's only pink Nutella. Okay, only pink Nutella. And then, and meow. BB cat. All right, BB cat. I'm going to put the video camera away, okay? <laughs> I'm going to put the video camera away, all right? This is since Thunder doesn't know what to think about you being on his cat tree. I got something to say. What? Um, you. Uh, mommy smells stinky. Mommy smells stinky? Uh, oh, we can't say that on the video, BB. Hello everyone, I'll have a minute or two because I'm running way behind schedule for work. So I want to show you what's up with Mercury 9. She's got her primer coat on her. And I found a couple of problems. One, the primer coat needs to be thicker. It's flat black to me a paint. Um, XF1. The ends here were masked with Silly Putty. You saw that. I had to pull the Silly Putty off because it was sinking in the holes. It's not a big deal. I got it out, and that's one of the wonderful things about Silly Putty is it'll stick together if you pull it right. Give it a good firm pull, and it comes right out. Um, I got a couple of seams to touch up. Not fill. All the seam filling I did earlier came out perfect on this thing. Flat black paint will show it really well. And I know she's a little off camera. I don't really want to pick her up much. I'll move the camera. But if you look carefully, you will see, I mean, there's a seam line running right along there. I don't see one hint of that seam. Okay, let's turn to 180, where the other seam line was running. Right along there, not one hint of that seam. Seam filling is perfect on this thing. What I didn't get is where these fins attach to the upper stage. There's some light gaps in there in a few places. Okay. Plus, I need to give a much darker coat of paint to the top, or my light blocking won't work. The lower half, all the light blocking is perfect now. Another thing I want to talk about is the command center, okay? Command center here. Let's see if I can do this without knocking things around. All right, now, for scale, what we have inside the top of the scam command center is a 1350 person. Okay, just knocked him, and I was afraid that would happen. He's not glued down or anything. That's a one three fifty Tamiya person. Okay, cut him off the sprue so I'd have something to work with. I got the floor built. I figured out how to put all the furniture in there just a little bit ago. The back panel for that is right here. Okay. When it's backlit, it looks really nice. I have a little cleanup work to do with that as well, and that's done. Okay, it fits in the command center perfectly fine. In fact, it fits in there so well, it'll, I'm not gonna put it in there because it's not done. But when I put it in the command center, it holds itself in place without glue, so it's perfect. Okay, so I will have the furniture done in the command center real soon, probably within an hour sitting down to work on it. This part right here, I don't think I'm building flooring for. I talked to Miss Nelly about it, and she seemed to think I don't really need to. 
she was of the opinion I should go ahead and use these on the windows. And I'm not so sure about that, but yeah, they're about the right scale for this. Using them in the windows will look fine. Okay? Using them in the windows will look fine. So i got to get boxes built for that and put them in these windows. Then I can start painting the command center. The base, well, I'll show you the base in the next, in a minute. It's pretty much done, ready for groundwork. Once I get that groundwork in there, I can start working on the lighting. This thing's progressing pretty fast. It has to. i got three weeks left. All right, I'll be back later. All right, short update on the Mercury 9. Light on my face so you can actually see me. Um, first off, you can see her sitting right here. She's got like four layers of Tamiya flat black paint on her. And it's still not blocking the light. So I'm going heavy duty. I'm going to quit using this stuff here. Although that jar was not open, so it's probably dead now. But I'm going to quit using this stuff here. I'm going heavy duty. I went and bought some enamel. Flat black enamel primer. I know no light's going to come through that. So we'll have that all blocked up and ready to go. Working on the command center. Um, pretty much got the inside of this all blocked up with aluminum foil tape. So all I have to do is slap it together. I'm going to go ahead and take care of these windows in a few minutes. I'm using some more of this film that I used here for those windows. Okay. I asked Nellie about it and she said, yes, it looks good. So I'm going to do it. I don't know where that film is. I know it's on this desk. I've got to get a little bit more organized on my desk here. And the other thing I've been doing is the command center is getting a computer console. This is fiber optic going out the bottom of it. Okay, if I lower the light, put some fiber optic up there, you can see that we're getting some lightage in there. Once it's painted, I can trim them flat, flat against the screens, against the consoles I built. And you gotta remember, this is 1350, so there is <laughs> not much to those consoles. But a uh, command center for like NASA doesn't need much of the consoles. Okay? And all the fiber optic are going to be computer lights. And I'm probably going to use another 4060 timer chip to get some blink rates on those screens. Get some different blinking going on. So those have some motion to them. Almost done with this. i got to put four more fibers in it. Let that glue cure. Now when you're gluing fiber optics, I don't there's some things you got to be careful of. First thing is you cannot use plastic glue. Some to me extra thin, going to eat up your fiber. Going to destroy it. Um, super glue will destroy it. I'm using Microsoft Micro Crystal Clear to glue my fibers with. You can use PVA glue, but this stuff holds a little bit better. It's a little bit stronger than PVA. It's PVA based, I can tell that, but it's just stronger. So I use it for that. Um, use epoxy too. But I wouldn't, do not use super glue, do not use model glue. It's just going to eat the fiber. And that's not what we want. Pardon the noise, it's Thunder Paws. He's playing with uh, a toy. You can see him down there. Okay. He brought a toy and he wants to play. So let me get at it. I will show you guys another update in a little bit. Again, she's getting enameled rattle can. I really don't want to put rattle can on her, but I'm going to rattle can her. Just because I need that light blocked and I need to proceed on her. And I can't proceed on her until that flat black paint and the light block is done. And then she's going to get another paint coat and then she's going to get another paint coat and another paint coat. I have about five different colors that are going on that ship. Just so you guys have a preview. Let me get going on this. Oh, here it is. Here's the film I'm using for those windows. Okay. These are for these windows. So if I get one lined up, you guys can get an idea what that's going to look like. Okay. So it's going to have at least look like there's something going on in the windows. All right. So let me get at it. And I will be back with an update. I'm hoping the next two, three hours to have the command center done. Because once I get these fibers in here, I can paint it. Once this is painted, I and the windows are done in here, 
fibers glue, paint, get the windows done here, windows done here, I can start getting the LEDs in there. So that's the order things have to go in. I'll be back in a bit. All right, everyone. I've said before, I use it to me a handy drill. Some of you have, I've gotten comments posted basically saying, but it only accepts a one size drill bit. This is the Tamiya Call It. Okay. And yeah, you can see the hole in it. It only really supports a small range of drill bits. All right. Now, sitting here on my chopper, too, the chopper. If you're scratch building, you need a chopper. I have some Dremel collets. Quite a few of them, actually. In fact, anyone who's used a handy drill will know. If you look at the tip of this handy drill, I there we go. Look how small that drill bit is. That is a point seven five millimeter drill bit, I think. Might be smaller. I can check that because I used to drill some fiber optics a second ago. No, it's point five millimeter drill bit in the handy drill, and you can tell I've been using it. It's not broken. I've never broken a drill bit in the handy drill. I use it instead of a pin vise on a regular basis. And I drilled quite a few holes. You can see the like little octopus looking thing I got going right here. More like squid thing. With all the fibers coming out the bottom of it. Not one broken drill bit. Just wanted to leave, leave you guys a little message saying look for some Dremel collets that fit in the Tamiya Handy Drill. I can use a very wide variety of size of drill bits and this is a heck of a lot more fun than a pin vise when you're drilling holes. That's all I gotta say. Alright, back in a bit. Alright, I'm working on the photo edge for the Mercury 9 and this is a set made by Paragraphics specifically for the Mercury 9. And you know, it Here's one spot. It does help with the detailing. I mean, that, that door is on there pretty good. Didn't know that window was there when I was cutting out windows. This door helps an awful lot with this piece. Okay. And there's a couple other spots where there's doors, like on the end of this. All right, and this, this piece sits here beside it like that. So, okay, you can't focus on this. I've got too much zoom going. I know some of you think, I do that a little too much. But it allows you guys to see what I'm doing. Now, the main reason I stopped to talk about this is there's a unlisted part in the directions all right it's right here that part right there doesn't have a number to it 10 and 12 are those doors okay those are those doors the arch doesn't have a number on it well on the photo edge set that arch is part 8 I just want to let everyone know on the photo edge set that arch is part 8 and it's missing a number itself okay so far, I'm liking the Photo Edge set. This is a good set. Unlike that TRS DS thing, where those decals are worthless because they didn't print them on white, so you can't put them on anything but white. Yeah, we're not going to go there. See, I, I find the bad products for you. All right, anyhow, I'm going to get back to it. Just want to let you know that the part number eight wasn't listed on my directions. He probably has an update on his website. I haven't gone and looked. All right, I'll be back in a bit. All right, we're talking windows here. We got three or four different techniques going on because I, three techniques going on because I got three different sets of windows for the Mercury Nine. Okay. First are these windows. These windows are getting a film behind them. Okay and the film is sitting on my desktop somewhere. I found it last night. I'm not going to mess with it right now. i got too much stuff because I'm preparing to start soldering together LEDs. Oh, 
Here's the command center with its tentacles of fiber. It's painted up. I'm not worried about the overpaint back spray of the paint back there because well when it's in here, you're just not gonna see it. Okay. Um, this I'm gonna go ahead and cut some clear plastic styrene and glue it on there because I'm gonna have to mask those windows. I'm gonna go ahead and put the building together, then paint it. I'm not gonna try to paint it and put the building together. I just don't think that's gonna work. So I'm gonna put some clear styrene across those windows right there on the inside. Okay. These windows down here are getting clear to cow film. And then I have to mask those when I paint. So this is going to be interesting. These windows and the doors need to be masked. I'm going to use the Microsol for that. Okay, because this is going to get coated in Tamiya paints. So I'm not too worried about that. And I know the Microsol works on Tamiya paints. So there we go. There's my masking techniques I'm going to use. I'm going to get after it. Because I need this done today. No doubts. It's got to be done today. All right, everyone. Working on the Mercury 9. I know. Disarray. We're going to clean that up in a second. Just wanted to show you a few things. First off, we have glass in all windows now. Well, not glass. This window up here, you can see it. Clear styrene, cut and fit. Glued in with uh, micro scale, crystal clear. The windows on the bottom ones, you can see them in the reflected light. That is actually decal film. I cut some decal film, I think I showed you that, and put it right over the windows. Okay? This one, oh, get her on camera. Yeah, you gotta focus on this this time. There's nothing there for you to focus on. There we go. This one has inserts. Now, the problem with these inserts, let me back the camera out because it's not wanting to stay on what it is, what I'm doing here, is, yeah, we got to move the camera or you won't see what I'm doing, what I've done, anyhow, because they have to be backlit. It's going to be dark without being backlit. Fogo de chao. There we go. Now you can see what I've done. There are little photographs in these windows. And it really has to have some good backlighting for it to show. And I hit it occasionally. There we go. And yeah, you can see that I have not completely light blocked this entranceway. That's because the doors have windows. And every single one of those windows has a micro scale micro mask on them. Okay, so when I paint, I can peel that off, and those windows will be lit. So there you go. All the windows are done. What I'm going to work on now is getting the command deck assembled. Okay, we're working on that. And here, speaking of command deck, remember the spaghetti monster thing here? Well, what we have now is this. If I get her in light, oy, why is everything non-cooperative today? You can see that different areas of that light up. Non-cooperative day, that's what it's been for everything. But you can see parts of them light up due to the fiber optics. Okay? Yeah. And I'm going to have different colored lights all over that console using different colored LEDs. All right? So let me get busy. We're going to put this this into this today. And we'll put some little peoples in there and all sorts of fun stuff. And then when I get it together, I can start masking and painting. Look, it's already in there. I got it in there already. And let's bend some fibers around. Uh, let's see if we can see some light through the windows. Yes, you can. So you can see what I'm going for. We will have a fully lit command center by the end of today. So I'll be back to show you what I've done in a little bit.